what's ahead today? Salt Lake Summer League. Represent. If you, if you could play an NBA game with, with your hat on, would you? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Which hat would it be? That's a good question. I don't know. I'm not sure. That's a good one. How was Canadian basketball experience? It was, it was awesome. Um, you know, just having put in so much time, so much effort, so much work um, to accomplish, to get on the world stage, to win a medal in a, in a world competition, to qualify for the Olympics. Um, the accumulation of what we accomplished this summer is massive. And, um, you know, it's been a lot of blood, sweat, and tears for a lot of years, you know, to get to that point. Um, and now, you know, it's gearing right back up next summer to accomplish another goal. Um, you know, so it's, it was, it was an unbelievable summer and feeling and, um, you know, keeping on that upward trajectory for Canada basketball as a, an organization and Canada as a nation. And, you know, I know we made a lot of people proud. On a lighter note, what was it like winning that medal against Walker? Oh, it's good. It's a lot of ammo in the backpack. <laughs> That I'm not athletic, that's what he said? Oh my gosh. He doesn't know the definition of athleticism, does he? <laughs> we, uh, we These young kids. He said you weren't going to like him saying that. We were asking him what the difference is going to be playing with John versus playing with you at different lineups. And uh, uh, he was like, well, John's really athletic. He's, uh, yeah, young kids, man. They think athleticism is all running and jumping. <laughs> yeah. Coach Hardy said that a lot of players this year may have to adjust to different roles. Um, what do you think your role will be? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question for Will, I guess. Um, I don't think he knows what anybody's role is going to be at the moment. Um, you know, my role, I mean, obviously in the NBA has been a lot different every single team I've played on, every single year. Um, but my role has been fluid, and I think, you know, one of the things that I can bring to a team is versatility and fluidity um, and playing a bunch of different roles and being able to play with different guys and different lineups and, you know, kind of filling in gaps where needed. Um, you know, if we need more spacing, if we need more, you know, plays and create creation, um, different stuff, or if we just need a leader, different guy out there like that. Um, I think it's it's going to be different, um, not only this year, but throughout the year. And, um, you know, I think that's something that I, I can bring and help this team with this year. We watch Jokic win a title. Summer League, suddenly everybody's got a big guy sitting at the elbow, pass right <laughs> behind him. Like, do you feel like this is where the game might be going, and how do you think this fits to kind of what you like to do? Yeah, I mean, Golden State won a couple titles, what, six, seven years ago, and then everybody's shooting 53s a game. Um, now it's kind of, you know, get with it or get left behind kind of thing. But, um, you know, Jokic is really, really good at what he does. Um, but, I mean, I, I think, you know, being able to, to play through your bigs, you know, have a lot of movement. Um, it's hard to guard. It's really hard to guard. Um, you know, especially traditionally, traditional thinking and traditional de defenses, you know, it's hard to scheme against that. So, you know, I would say some facet of the game is definitely going towards that, but, you know, you also need somebody who can <laughs> play that role and do that. Like you need somebody, if you're going to play that Golden State, who can shoot the, the, the ball off the dribble like Steph and put pressure and space the floor like Clay and the rest of those guys were. How does your uh, Beaver experience influence getting ready for the season? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a different pr preparation, obviously, because um, you're playing full-blown competition like uh, two months before the first regular season game. So, um, you know, obviously you you play a bunch and you kind of ramp up for, for the FIBA stuff. Um, you know, you're in shape, you're game ready mentally, physically, emotionally. Um, you go through it and then now you're at that weird stage for the next 10 to 12 days where you're like, do I take time off and get my body right? Do I stay in shape? Do I do this? Do I go somewhere and kind of be away? Do I stay here and be with the guys? So, um I think it's a fine line. It can go, you know, a few different ways, but it's just about making sure that you take care of your body as well as you can. Um, you know, obviously you're, you know, you just played a bunch of games, so you're you're ready, and it's about just you know staying ready and keeping that 
that drive and that focus, um, but flipping the page to a different team and a different role and a different system and a different way of thinking in the NBA game than the FIBA game. Does it feel like there's a big difference in your way, your ability to impact the game if you're starting or coming off the bench in your career? Um, yeah, I mean, it's a little bit different. Definitely a little bit different. I mean, it, when you're starting, um, usually you play four stints. You know, you play the first quarter, you come out, and then you come back in the end of the second half. And then you do that in the second half as well. Or end of the second quarter, sorry. And then start the second half and then finish the game. So you have a little more time to let the game come to you and, and be, you know, kind of just, just play, play the game. Um, it also depends on your role. If you're coming off the bench and you're an offensive guy off the bench and you need to give the team a lift, you got to come off and be aggressive from the jump or from the, you know, from the whistle that you come in. Whereas if you're starting, you can kind of let that game come to you. You can, you know, feel it out a little, make some passes, run some things, and figure out how the defense is guarding you. When you come, you know, when you come off the bench, you kind of almost have to get right to it um, if that's your role. So I think it all depends on you know your role and what the team needs and you know what the game dictates. But um, it's definitely a it's a different feel and definitely a little different. But um, you can be effective in, in both roles easily. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'll be there. <laughs> I'll be there for sure, uh, one way or another. So, you know, that's, a, you know, been a goal of mine since I was, you know, a little kid. You know, in 2000, watching Steve Nash and um, Canada play in the Sydney Olympics. You know, I remember, you know, where I was and, you know, what I was doing. And, you know, that, that's been a goal of mine for a long, long time and uh, to be an Olympian. And, you know, we have that opportunity now. Where were you? What were you doing? I, I was actually in my my aunt Janine's living room, you know, on the carpet floor watching those games, getting up super early to watch these games, and you know that was just you know I loved basketball. So the the whole nation was behind it. They were playing unbelievable basketball at the time. Nash was amazing, and um, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. And you know, it's something that you know I'm, when you're a kid, you're like, oh, I'm gonna do that one day. I'm gonna do that one day. And then so now we have the opportunity, and uh, yeah, we'll be there. Is Steve Nash the main reason Canadian basketball is where it is right now? Um, he's definitely a key piece of the pie. You know, obviously the Raptors play a big role. You know, Vince Carter was huge. Um, but Nash, in, in terms of Canadian basketball, is, yeah, definitely. Cool. Thanks, Kelly. Appreciate you guys. Thanks.